right, folks, we're back again. And this time, we're reviewing Glenn Stewart's Starship Mage. The whole series. Not just one book, all the series. And with me is Ritu Lalit. I'm Ishan Lalit. Just to remind you, we are available on YouTube, Audioboom, and iTunes. So let's get to the review, shall we? Yeah. Hi, people. So, uh, I like this series. I like this series quite a lot. I uh, picked it up just out of the blue. I just picked it up, you know, and I recommended it to her. Uh, this, it didn't, it didn't make any sense to pick up a book with space and mage at a point of time, but then I read it. It was amazing. Uh, the first book starts with uh, Damien Montgomery, just being a mage, trying to uh, basically jump. What, what what do they do? They, they jump into space. Uh, so they go into space. And uh, how they can do faster than light travel is through the help of these... Magic, of course. These mages. Yeah. Magic. Uh, the, magics, uh, the magic is very specific. You are either a combat mage or you are a jump mage. Or you are a medicinal mage. There are, I, as he, far as I can understand, there healers are, just, are dime a dozen. Huh? <laughs> healers are dime a dozen. He, healers are there. Then there are combat mages. Then it's a mix of science and magic. The entire spaceship is built on science, and they are all. You know, they've got their own personal computers, which are on their wrist. Futuristic. Uh, uh, very yeah. futuristic. But in the center of the uh, starship, there is a place where there is a liquid silver replica of the star starship. And the mage is supposed to concentrate on it and jump a person to one light year at a time. And it's about four or five light years that he has to jump. Um, I like the first book. I like the fact that it was intense. I also like the fact that this kid... He's, he's, an, uh, he's late teens, early 20s, no? So he, it has to be intense. Uh, really? Yeah. I don't think so. I think uh, the only way... Uh, it is intense because a lot of uh, other planets and the other ways come into the work, and you never know where this is going. It's, uh, it just keeps you... Off kilter, you know, just about off kilter. I like the. Funnily enough, the description was all about technology, about magic, and uh, the uh, looks of the people, the clothes they wear, was not described. But I did not miss it until I sat down and started reviewing the book mentally in my mind. You know, come to think of it, uh, now I, yeah, you're right. No, you're absolutely right. That detailing wasn't there. The detailing is all on the magic, on the starship, on the personal computers, and all. You don't know whether this guy is white, brown, black. No, no, he's white. He's uh, definitely white. Damien Montgomery. Yeah, okay. But uh, then they, uh, it's they futuristic. No, no, they explain it. And like, um, you go. He grows a mustache. The first book, he has a mustache. And with the stark contrast of his pale face, he does. Yeah, pale, I the spaces, all, spaces are all pale. Face, I said face. Yeah, spaces are supposed to be pale. It's something to do with the travel at the speed of light. No, that doesn't mean the, there are no black mages. No, there are black mages. So? But it wasn't like that detailing wasn't so particular. And you have these pirates. What do they look like? So basically, uh, let uh, uh, winding down the point. So basically, they, they, these guys are mages, uh, and they, he's a mage. He gets on the ship, and they come to. Uh, they inter uh, You know, they basically interact with pirates. They get, uh, they get sucked into some espionage. They get. <laughs> it's a mess. <laughs> I know they go. So they go shipping. 
Yeah, uh, people to other planets. They go to the frontier to uh, escape the law because he's broken a mage law, which we will not get into. It's a spoiler. <laughs> so, then, uh, and it ends with him coming together with the mage king of Mars. Yeah, uh, let's explain this to you. That there is a, a kingdom of planets. We don't do things a small scale in this book, right? There is a kingdom of planets. All ruled by all the mage. All ruled by the, the mage, mage king of Mars. Because and the mages can only transport people from one place to the other. So they hold their affiliation to the mage king of Mars. Uh -huh. and, and there is a, a hand. Uh, a there hand. are plenty of hands. Okay, so there is a... Hands are basically the, uh, the commanders the, of the mage king of Mars pursuing him. The tra uh, traveling judges and <coughs> executioners. executioners of the uh, king. Yeah. So um, that uh, winds down like, OK, so now the, the second book is Hand of Mars. Again, we have explained to you the, th the thing. But this time, he has been trained and is in action. He's trying to put down a revolution. No, no, he's not. He's he's come over there to put down the revolution, but but the <laughs> revolution are the good guys and the, yeah. the bad guys are the guys in power and all that kind of thing. It, you know, it's all very twisted, turvy. It's very gritty. It's like real real world. Yeah, and uh, in this one, I saw the detailing coming in. In this one, they they did. Uh, explain what the revolutionaries wore, the, uh, what the civilians were like, and what uh, the, the regent of the planet, or whatever, he's like. So, and here, his right hand. Uh, here, there was a bit of detailing. Again, the detailing was saved for the, what uh, Glenn Stewart considers important, the technology, the magic, and of course, the planet. I like the small touches he gives, you know, like uh, the ocean is purple. <laughs> okay. The trees are pink. I like that. And the best thing I like is the characterization of Damien Montgomery. You know, yeah, I agree. But I think the second book is the weakest of the series. For me, the second book was the weakest of the series. It was a lot of politics and uh, less of space travel, probably that's why. No, I, um, I just, it, it showed the growing up of Damien Montgomery. Yes. But it did not, uh, you know. There's no personal touch. Uh, yes, it showed the growing up of Damien Montgomery. It shows uh, how powerful he's becoming, but there was no, no hook to just trap me in. I enjoy, having said that, I enjoyed this book. I enjoyed this book. I They're entertaining books. Yeah, I enjoyed this book. But uh, compared to the other books, I felt this one was slight. You know, that itself is a compliment for the books because you think compared to the other books of, uh, uh, in the series, and you're not comparing to some other book. This is a very, uh, listener, this is a very unique kind of a series. Viewers, listeners, whatever. <laughs> people. Uh, people. <laughs> uh, the third book, Starship Mage 3, Voice of Mars. This is where I absolutely fell in love with the series. I... Till this time, you know, we've read quite a lot of books. We've written a few of them, so... Uh, we look at them slightly differently. So, but this one, this one just blew my mind. Uh, he goes back home. There are, there's an intergalactic war going to happen. Not an intergalactic, well, space war going to happen between two colonies of um, humans. And he's the one putting it down. The, uh, there's always the backdrop of Somebody trying to F with a kingdom. Okay, somebody, which is not explained, but it comes into action here more 
the underlying storyline becomes the focus, which is keeping us baited. And the relationship between him and his former girlfriend just shows how different he is now and how yes and what he is like the mustache is gone the geekiness is gone he when he is just one powerful badass mage who doesn't know his limits yeah and he goes like i'm the i'm the hand of the mage king of mars and i will and you will listen to me. I will be listened to. Yeah. <laughs> I love that line. <laughs> and it, it just, he just grows on you so much in this book. Yes. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I quite like the little touches the author has given. Like uh, the Mage King of Mars has a 13-year-old daughter. Who has a crush on him. Who has a crush on him. And he thinks it's wiser... To skip the planet, put a few planets in between. No, it's really, put a few solar systems in between, <laughs> in between them. <laughs> yeah, that, those are. Uh, that is again one of those. Uh, that comes in uh, the second book. That comes in the second book. I liked it. The third book, uh, he's again running away from Mars. <laughs> he's running away from everything. The moment he gets into this uh, clinch with his g former girlfriend, Old Flame. He decides that he's going to skip planet again. Yeah, it's his. Yeah, he is. Okay, uh, um, Starship's Mage Four, the most recent one. It just came out about uh, a month back, a month or two back. Okay, Alien Arcana. Here, he has no choice but to return to Mars. Yes. And this is the most powerful book of the series. Funnily enough, people call it the weakest among, of the series. No, I liked it because suddenly things are coming together. There's a conspiracy going on and uh, he has to fight it. it it's it's a which it involves enemy within, which is very, uh, makes the angle very interesting. I, up till now, it was... Uh, I mean, you fight between the majors and the mundane. Yeah, and he has to beat uh, uh, ma uh, other majors, other hands. There is definitely a hand at work who's uh, fighting Here's against the, the kingdom. The only issue I have with this book is the politics of the court has not been, you know, uh, explained too much. What do you mean by that? Uh, when you're doing court, you have to do a lot of hidden motives. You have to do a lot of betrayals. You have to do a lot of to and fro's, you know, misdirection and all that kind of thing. Uh, probably the author himself is too straightforward in his thinking to do that. Okay, uh, the um, you know uh, one of the criticisms I read about this book was that he just uh, the Damien Montgomery just keeps going and be uh, you know doesn't listen to answers doesn't uh, act when people are trying to tell him not to do something he doesn't ask why he just goes ahead and keeps beating everybody. With a with a club, sort of, okay. Oh, so, he totally does. Yeah, and mm. so things are not coming to head, okay. Uh, so that's the criticism. I kind of agree with, but I understand it's not in in, in his character to do other things that way. Uh, he he will listen to you after. He, After he gets his uh, head bashed in. Yes, he, yeah, uh, he will listen. No, not his head bashed in. After he will hit you with everything. And uh, now uh, he's one of those guys who will beat you on the head and then say, now tell me why did you do that? That was really stupid. So I do agree. I do agree with that criticism, but I do understand that the character is not built that way. When you, when you build... And the intrigue is not satisfying. The intrigue is not satisfying. I yes, when you have an enemy within. Yes, there is no, uh, that suspenseful thriller has not uh, did not.
come. But the action sequences were amazing. I like this book, but uh, I like the. I, I like this more like than it. the second one, but lesser than the first one. And the first one is the second best of the series. <laughs> yeah, I. I Though uh, this is the uh, this is the book the l last one up till now, is the book where the plot thickens. But uh, I. But mean, doesn't come to because he didn't listen or say um, even when they kidnapped somebody to uh, make uh, to get him to talk to them. They he didn't listen, and even the guy went like, "Well, I know uh, what it's like going to a war uh, going to war with a hand." So, bye-bye. I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah, it wasn't fun. And that wasn't fun. But I don't think, you know, the I intrigue, I think the next books oh, yeah, will deliver. Book. But uh, this one had a bit of it, but the character is not built that way. He always needs somebody. Th this book, uh, his bodyguard, uh, the crazy chick, uh, his bodyguard, wasn't there. So she's the one who usually makes him listen. Yeah. And she ran away. Uh, she, uh, she fell in she love. She fell in love with a politician for a fault thing. For God's sake. Politicians. Yeah. So le let's see where the series goes. Uh, how would you rate the series? How would you, uh, yeah, rate these, uh, rate the series? The series gets a resounding four from me. Um, um, I agree. I'll just add a point five to it. I I just like it a little more. You would. <laughs> that boy, Damien Montgomery. Oh my God, he's so much of a man's man. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I would, uh, yeah, no, he's not. And there are places where I go like, it. anyhow, because I do, you know, watch a whole lot of mixed martial arts and a lot of sports. I know what men are like. So I do, he's a bit off kilter. Yeah, he's a bit crazy. He's fun. And the series is absolutely fun. I would recommend anybody this series. Uh, you know, you guys go you know, read it, listen to it, whatever. Reminding you, this show is available on YouTube, Audioboom, and iTunes. So you can catch a content anywhere you like. That's Ritu Lalit. Hi. I'm Shan Lalit. And bye-bye. Bye, people.